Okay, so today we're going to look at DuckDuckGo browser, the privacy browser, the browser that protects you. If you're watching this video as a short, tap on the thumbnail in the bottom right hand corner right now to see the full video. If you're already watching the full video, hold tight, more details coming up very shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as I say today, we're going to look at the DuckDuckGo browser. This is the browser that protects your privacy and it's completely unbiased. Now you might have used the DuckDuckGo search engine as opposed to Google and found it handy. Well now DuckDuckGo actually have a browser themselves, the equivalent of Google Chrome. In actual fact, it's built on Google Chrome technology and is available for the iPhone, the iPad, Android phones and tablets also available on the Mac and the PC. So today I'm going to go through it on an Android phone. So let's just go into the Google Play Store. Now, if you're trying to do this on an iPhone or an iPad, then you need to go into the Blue Apple App Store. If you're trying to install this on a Mac or a PC, then go to your browser and go to duckduckgo.com. But as I say, I'm doing this on an Android phone. So I'm going to go into the Play Store and just go to the search at the top and just type the word duck, duck, go. And then hopefully after a while, you should see duck, duck, go appear. Tap on it and there you go. You should see duck, duck, go priv or privacy browser. Tap the green install just to the right of that. This bit might take a few minutes. It really just depends on the speed of your internet connection and the speed of your phone, your tablet or your computer. So just be patient and once it's installed, we can then open the app. Okay, so as we can see, open has now appeared. So that means it's installed. So I'm just gonna tap on open and let's have a look what we got. So there you go, it comes up. The internet can be kind of creepy, not to worry. Searching and browsing privately is easier than you think. Let's do it. So let's just tap, let's do it. And it's asking us here, do we want to make DuckDuckGo your default browser? Open links with peace of mind every time. So what it means is by default is means when the phone automatically tries to open a, uh, a web page, then it's going to do it through DuckDuckGo if we set it as a default browser. Well, at the moment, I'm going to say maybe later because we're just testing this out. We'll see how it goes first and perhaps make a decision later. So I'm going to tap maybe later. So there you go. Next, try visiting one of your favorite sites. I'll block trackers so they can't spy on you. I'll also upgrade the security of your connection if possible. So you might be thinking, what is a tracker? Well, a tracker is a piece of software that collects information about your online activity. This information can include your browsing history, the websites you visit, the ads you click on, and even your location. Trackers are used by website advertisers and other third parties to track your online behavior. So it's really designed to customize the adverts that websites bring you. And it's not just one particular website, it can span across several websites. So for instance, if you're on say Yahoo's webpage and you take an interest in a holiday on there, and then later on, you perhaps go to MSN's web page, then you're probably going to get adverts popping up on the screen tailored to the type of holiday that you're looking for or the location of holiday that you're looking for. So that's where trackers really come into it. At the moment, they're being used to build a profile about you or your machine so that they can customize the type of adverts they send to you. Their ultimate goal is that you will have an interest in every advert you see on the system and you're likely to obviously make a purchase through that advert, which means that the websites, if they're tailoring the advertising for you, they can charge more to the advertiser because there's more of a chance when you see that advert, as I say, you're likely to make a purchase. Now also DuckDuckGo says, I'll upgrade the security of your connection if possible. Now this means that it will try 
and use a secure version of the website, an HTTPS version, which means that the, the connection between you and the website is as secure as possible. It means it's encrypted between you and the website so that nobody can intercept any information going from you and the website. This is particularly important if you're purchasing from the internet, as if you have to give your credit or debit card details, you really don't want these details falling into the wrong person's hands. So before you send off those that information to the website, this information is encrypted so that only you and the person that you're paying can actually see that information. So there we go. Let's just try going to uh, a website. Let's just try going to yahoo.com, say for instance. Now, here we go, it's come up. As you tap and scroll are block pesky trackers. Go ahead, just keep browsing. So let's just tap, got it. So here we've got a cookie notice from Yahoo. Now, at the moment, I don't really know what to do with this. Now, thankfully, DuckDuckGo does have a setting in here which will handle cookie notices for you. It will select the absolute minimum that you need to be able to use the website and the, 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 the settings that are not likely to give away any information. So let's just tap on the three dots in the top right hand corner and go down to settings right at the bottom. Tap settings. And if I scroll down, there you go. We've got an option there under privacy that says manage cookie pop up. So at the moment that is disabled. If I tap that, OK, so it gives us a description. It says when DuckDuckGo detects cookie consent pop ups on sites you visit, we can try to automatically set your cookie preferences to minimize cookies and maximize privacy. Then close the pop ups. Some sites don't provide an option to manage cookie preferences, so we can only hide pop ups like these. So it's basically saying it can't do everything but hopefully it should be able to do most things. So I'm just going to turn on let DuckDuckGo manage cookie consent pop up. So let's just turn that on. OK, let's go back and back again. Now, the cookie notice is still up on the screen, but what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to refresh the page. So let's tap the three dots in the top right hand corner, tap on the circle with the arrow on it in the top right. Now, the cookie notice is still there, so let's just go back. And I'm going to go back into Yahoo again. So I haven't accepted the cookie notice. I haven't denied it. So I'm going back into Yahoo. And yes, it is still there. Now, this is obviously one of the cookie notices that they can't get rid of. So I'm just going to reject all at the moment. And let's let Yahoo load. So there you go. Comscore was trying to track you here. I block them. You can check the URL bar to see who is trying to track you when you visit new websites. And there it says high five. So let's just tap high five. Now, one of the other things DuckDuckGo says is they block adverts as well. Now, again, they're not going to block adverts on every website. They're just going to really block the real intrusive adverts on the website. So if I scroll down in Yahoo, there we go. We can still see that there are adverts on Yahoo's website. But this is a legitimate company. It's a legitimate business. Now, DuckDuckGo aren't trying to put people out of business. Obviously, adverts pay for the website. If the adverts weren't on there, then you'd have to pay for the website directly yourself whenever you went into it or as a subscription model. So it's not going to block every advert, but hopefully it should block most of them. So you might have noticed at the top of the screen, there's a flame just to the right of the address bar. Now, what is this? This is called fire. And what this means is, is that if we tap on the fire button, it says here, personal data can build up in your browser. Yuck. Use the fire button to burn it all away. Give it a try now. So there we go. We just tap clear all tabs and data and it refreshes the browser. So it says here, you're now blocking trackers across the web. I can also block trackers hiding in your other apps, even when you aren't using the phone. So we've got an option here to enable app tracking protection on your phone or your tablet across all apps. Now, at the moment, I'm only interested in blocking trackers 
on the web browser. So it's up to you. You can say enable app tracking protection if you want. This possibly could drain the battery a little bit faster on your phone because it's always going to be running in the background. So if your battery life isn't particularly good, then perhaps leave that switched off. So let's also just have a look at the settings in DuckDuckGo. So I'm going to tap on the three dots in the top right hand corner. And we've got here bookmarks, logins, downloads. So bookmarks is pretty simple. So you can add favorites um, to your bookmarks. So if you go to a website regularly and you don't want to have to type in the address in the search URL bar, then you've got an option there to actually save it as a preset. Logins, if you want to save a login to something on there, you can save that in logins. And, and downloads, if we go into downloads, there you go. It says no files downloaded yet, but that's where any files that you download through that browser will go to. If we go back again, we've got settings here. So we've got the option here to set as default browser. So if we've decided that we trust the browser and we want it to be our main browser, the browser that the computer goes to or the tablet goes to or the phone goes to whenever it's asked to go to the web, then we can turn that on or we can turn it um, and we can click on browser app and choose DuckDuckGo as our main browser. We've also got logins there. So that's our logins that we've saved. Theme, we can change the themes. We've got a light theme. We've got a dark theme. We've got the system default. App icon, we can change the app icon on the front screen to a different color if we want to. We can change the fire button animation if we want from Inferno to Whirlpool to Airstream to nothing at all. We've even got accessibility options. So if you've got problems with your site, you can tap on that and there you go. You can manage text sizes. You can enforce a manual page zoom. So on the manage text size, we can turn that on and we can change the size to a size that's more comfortable for us or reduce it if it's too large. Um, we've also got an option here, as I say, enforce manual page zoom. So this means it should allow us to pinch and zoom on websites, um, even ones that would normally prevent it. Now, again, this probably won't work on absolutely every website, but it tries to uh, enable you to do it on most websites that wouldn't ordinarily enable you to, to pinch and zoom. So under the privacy setting, we've got here global privacy control GPC that's enabled by default. And that says DuckDuckGo automatically blocks many trackers with Go global privacy control GPC. You can also ask participating websites to restrict selling or sharing your personal data with other companies. So it's good to have that switched on. Manage cookie pop ups. We've already had a look at that. So that tries to limit the number of cookie consent pop ups you see unprotected sites. So these sites will not be enhanced by privacy protection. So if a website isn't working with the privacy protection turned on for any reason, then you can add this to the unprotected sites lists and DuckDuckGo won't protect you on that website. So it won't uh, block trackers. It won't try to encrypt the connection. So these are only really should, should be turned on for websites you really know and trust. We've also got fireproof sites. Now that means there, if we turn fireproof sites on, then it basically means your login information won't be erased every time you go back to the website. So some websites do rely on cookies to keep you signed in. They can also rely on cookies to know where you are. For instance, like the BBC uses cookies to know that you're in a certain part of the UK and it's going to give you the local news for that part of the UK or the weather for that part of the UK. So when you fireproof a site, cookies won't be erased and you'll stay signed in and it should keep you and uh, should keep the website knowing where you are, but they will still block third party trackers found on fireproof websites. So here we can add fireproof websites if we want to. And we can also stipulate when it asks. So you can ask him to ask every time, always or never. And we've also got automatically clear. So when you come out of the browser, it can automatically clear 
uh, tabs, it can automatically clear tabs and data to clean up your browser every time. Going a bit further down under customize, you've got site permissions. So you can allow sites to ask for location, camera and microphone permissions. You can turn those off if you don't want, but if a website you're going to needs to use your camera or microphone, i.e. if you're going to a website that you're going to talk to somebody over the internet via the camera and microphone, if that's turned off, then you won't be able to hear or see them. And likewise, if a website needs to know your location, such as if you're looking for the weather in your local location, then it won't display the local location because the website won't be allowed to ask to see where you are. You've got autocomplete suggestions there, so it will suggest to complete the uh, the searches that you do. So for instance, if you're starting to type a word in a search, it will try and finish off what you're trying to say so you don't have to type it. Notifications, that's enabled, so notifications popping up on the screen. Um, open links in apps, ask every time. Yeah, I'd leave that selected there. And there's some more there from DuckDuckGo, which are mainly things that are in beta. So they're in test at the moment. So it's up to you whether or not you try them, but they may not be 100%. So there you go. That is the DuckDuckGo browser, which is a great alternative to your normal browser, which should try and protect you against tracking. You should see less ads with it and hopefully you should be able to browse faster and easier. I hope you like this video and if you did, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos right here on my YouTube channel covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you and maybe even save you some time and money. And by the way, if you're looking for a VPN to increase your security, to increase your protection, then have a look in the links down below in the description, we've got some great deals from you and purchasing through these links really does help to support this website. It allows me to dedicate more time to creating great videos for you.